Commissioners Board Work Session. It is Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. It is 10.01 a.m. This is set to go until 11 a.m. This is a hybrid meeting. We're in Building 1, Room 280. For public virtual attendance, you may follow along on the Thurston County YouTube channel. I'm Carolina Mejia. I'm the chair of the board. I'm joined in the boardroom by Vice Chair Ty Manser, as well as Commissioner Gary Edwards. Uh, we have County Manager Romero Chavez and Assistant County Manager Robin Campbell. We will be discussing today petition for the formation of Uffet Lake Management District. It's an informational session or is a decision going to be requested? Informational. informational? Okay. And we have with us Tim Wilson from Public Works who will be guiding us through this presentation. Okay, good morning, commissioners. Uh, Tim Wilson with Public Works. Um, this briefing will uh, uh, likely be very familiar to you as it is uh, very similar to the one that was given regarding the petition received for Patterson Lake back in April uh, of this year. We're, um, next slide please. So today we're gonna talk about uh, the Thurston County Healthy Legs program and options that are available for uh, communities, uh, lake communities that uh, want to consider uh, forming or organizing. Uh, we're going to talk about the petition that was received from Offutt Lake. Uh, we're gonna talk about the lake management district formation process, including a couple of key decision points for the board and uh, what, what you can expect in the coming months uh, as, as you consider the petition that's been received. And then lastly, we will talk about uh, the county management of the LMDs. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, within the uh, Healthy Lakes program and within the options that are provided by, by statute, there are four general uh, organizational structures for communities that want to organize and, and perform lake management activities. Uh, the first is a lake association, uh, second is a homeowners association, uh, third is a special district, and finally a lake management district. And it's important to remember that each option has certain advantages or disadvantages and are guided by various statutes. Next slide. Okay, to go into a little more detail uh, on each uh, structure, a lake association uh, is a non-governmental uh, structure. It's a good structure typically for well-organized communities, uh, typically formed as a non-profit and funded through membership dues. The activities are managed by volunteers, contractors, or consultants. Uh, the members assume liability uh, of all of the activities that are performed. Only the owners who choose to contribute pay for those activities. Uh, it's considered flexible and voluntary, and it's not bound by county policy. Is there an RCW that uh, regulates this? There is likely a statute that regulates that, Commissioner, but I don't know. I can't cite that uh, RCW, so I'd have to get back to you on that. Has anyone ever done this? Do we have these in our... Theory? There are a lot of lake associations within Washington State. I can tell you as referenced through the uh, the WALPA website, if you go on to the Washington Lake Protection Association, WALPA. 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 W-A-L-P-A. And that is the Washington Lake Protection Association, and they have a list of different lake associations. Is, is that a website managed by... The state of Washington? What's no, it's an independent uh, website. It is sponsored largely by uh, lake lake professionals and uh, and industries that support uh, uh, lake management, uh, herbicide uh, uh, providers and consultants. Uh, so it is independent. At some point, I think it would be beneficial for us to know if there's an RCW. Okay. Okay, the uh, next option, uh, 
would likely not be a good option for the majority of Thurston County Lakes, uh, a homeowners association. Um, these are permanent, permanent organization with dedicated funding. The actions are dependent upon an active association board, uh, but it may not be representat representative of the entire lake. So it's really rare that you would have uh, an HOA that encompasses the entirety of a lake. Uh, with our lakes, you will have several HOAs that um, uh, that that may surround a lake. Uh, so there would need to be coordination beyond the homeowners association. And for that reason, it likely not a great option. And, and my same question applies: uh, RCW or something? I don't believe yeah, there's an RCW, but I will certainly look. And and Tim, this is kind of a quite weird question, but like sometimes we get citizens coming in and saying. Well, the state owns all the waters of the state. Like, so I mean, if you've got, let's just say in the in the situation that you just described, you've got a lake, you've got five homeowners associations. Mm -hmm. Do they all have legal authority to 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 mingle in this lake? That and, and and you know, what about this contention that lakes are owned by the state, and therefore, then what's our authority as a county or a homeowners association or an LMD to be throwing chemicals on them? Yeah, the, the state does uh, own the water itself. Um, ecology typically allows one APAM per, permit per lake. So if you are going to do- oh, a, a what permit again? APAM, uh, aquatic plant and algae management permit. So per lake, they, they issue one of those ecology. They, they like to stick to one permit per lake. I guess just a quick, I'm trying to, I want to make sure we get it right. Sure. On, uh, you say the water is owned by the state. Is there an RCW that dictates that, or is it just they make a claim to the water? Or what's the deal on some of that stuff? I'm, that I'm sure there is statute for, for that. I've seen it referenced many times. Up. Okay. I, I, I can't cite the statute. Yeah, me neither. That's why. I, but I just I didn't know its its applicability. But right. it's definitely there's language out there that okay. like to make it more complicated. The state yeah. owns the water, right? Not the land. Not the land under it. See, that's what's confusing yeah. because some places a landowner might own the clam beds, for yeah. example. Yeah, so they, they own uh, the In other water. places, they don't. I, I've never been able to figure so it out. So that's what they call waters of the state. Yeah, because they own the water. And that, that is that is specific in the statute, waters of the state. But they do not own the property underneath the bottom Who of the lake. the property underneath? Uh, it, it depends. It depends on, on, <laughs> on the property the owners. Yeah. It is a question. Yeah. Most parcels, when you look at it, yeah, it goes like, all the way to the shoreline. shoreline. Go to the shoreline, so, yeah. So who owns that? Who owns the oil well underneath the bed of the lake or the gold? <laughs> yeah. It, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, but you're saying that, like in my in my hypothetical, there's five homeowner associations around a lake. They could all try to apply for to ecology, but ecology is probably going to sift that through and give one of them the permission to kind of manage the lake ecology, or yes, because yes. they're That's not going to want five different homeowner associations doing five different things to their piece of the lake or whatever. That's right. Okay. So do they have a coordinating arm at ecology to do this? Ecology has uh, a staff that manages the, the APAM uh, permits, and we have had those questions come up at Thurston County. Uh, so the, the most recent conversation was specific, that I recall, was specific to Long Lake, and the, uh, some of the residents wanted to independently do work that was outside of, of the scope of the county's APAM permit. We brought Ecology in, had the conversation. Ecology uh, basically rejected al allowing that. So they will come out and give that guidance, but our experience is they have held out to one coordinated permit. Okay. Okay, the next, uh, next slide, please. So the next uh, structure uh, <laughs> you're, you're aware of is a special district. Uh, special dis district is self-governing by an elected governing board. It has an unlimited lifetime. The activities are managed by volunteers, contractors, or consultants. Um, special districts assume the liability of activities. 
special district manages permits as well and they are not currently bound by county policy so if we think about our IPM what herbicides we can use and those types of things special districts are not currently bound by that they are they are bound by the regulatory agency ecology of so can, sites. I was going to ask the difference between the lake association and the special district because a lot of the things here besides that the special district is under ecology while the lake association is under a nonprofit but I guess the benefits seem around the same so so to be clear if any of these organizations were doing herbicide control within the lake, they would be regulated by ecology across the board. They would be regulated by ecology's permit to, to do those activities. The difference between a lake association uh, and a special district is the special district is uh, creates that governmental structure uh, where, where they have represented, you know, a represented board, um, and they they take actions as such. Taxing authority is yes. the big difference. Yeah, a special great. district has taxing authority. And you said it's all voluntary on the Lake Association. Yes. So they can just, if, since they I'm not paying for that, then they just use the money that they can collect. Yeah, that's typically is opposing tax. Yeah. But it's not listed here, really. It's, it's not listed, people. but that is the big right. thing. Yeah, that's the big deal. Yeah, because that is a big thing. Yeah, I, I just just follow. We're talking about special. We just got done talking about special use district. I thought it was. So is. is this also a special use district, or what's it is the, the real term? What's the real what's term? By by statute, it's special district. Special district. Okay. 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 Next slide, please. And, and, and there is an RCW. Two. 8538, uh, 8538, I believe, on special districts. Okay. And I will double check that and make sure. Okay, the last uh, major structure is uh, Lake Management District. As you know, uh, Lake Management District forms a county administered program uh, where county staff serve as program administrators and subject matter experts. Uh, the difference between a, a lake management district and any of these other organizational structures is that uh, with a lake management district, the county assumes liability of the approved activities. So if it's within their work plan, if, um, uh, if, if it's a function of the LMD, then the county bears the risk for that. Uh, the county manages all the permits with an LMD it is subject to all applicable county policies, and uh, the advisory committees uh, are managed by county staff and subject to applicable policies and laws. So we're trying to, that is part of what we're trying to shore up with uh, some of the structure we're putting in place now. And this is also with RCW. Yeah, this is 3661. Next slide, please. Okay, so we'll get into the petition, and I'll, uh, at the end of your packet, for reference, you don't need to look now, but there is a uh, uh, boundary map for the proposed district. Uh, the actual petition is in there, as well as a um, uh, estimated timeline, uh, should the board move forward. The next couple slides are very, very wordy. I apologize for that, but um, I went verbatim from the petition. So the proposed activities uh, uh, by the Offutt Lake community, uh, the petitioners out there, uh, number one, to maintain a healthy and ecological balance of humans and wildlife in the lake to ensure safety of boaters and swimmers. Number two, to employ best practice, practice techniques to ensure environmental safety and preservation. Three, to contract with an environmental consultant company to conduct an uh, integrated aquatic vegetation management plan, or IVAM, to assess condition uh, uh, of Offutt Lake water quality, identify aquatic plants, and noxious species. Next slide, please. So to continue, uh, the, the um, 
proposed uh, topics. Uh, they also want to control nuisance levels of aquatic vegetation, noxious weeds, and non-native aquatic plants in accordance with an IMAP, as well as prescriptions developed in compliance with Thurston County's Integrated Pest Management or IPM policy and create a plan for best management practices. Uh, they propose to reduce toxic algae blooms and rapidly increasing weed growth, conduct regular water quality testing to identify lake nutrients and possible pollution sources, and finally, educate and inform the Offit LMD members on lake water quality and management issues, including toxic algae blooms, nutrient levels, and boating safety via e-newsletters and regular Offit Lake Management District Advisory Committee meetings. So it's kind of that high level, here, here is what we are uh, proposing to do when we organize. Is there anything meaningfully different in this than what we just approved for Patterson? No. No, it's very, very similar. <clears throat> okay, so uh, if, the, if the board chooses to move forward, uh, these are the eight steps uh, that we would be coming uh, forward to you for over the next uh, several months. Um, eight BOCC actions, uh, including two key decision points required for formation, and you're becoming familiar with these very quickly. Number one is to consider uh, that resolution of intention. Uh, two is to set, uh, two and three is to set and hold uh, the public hearing on uh, whether the um, proposed district is in the public interest and financially feasible. Uh, you would then consider uh, authorizing a vote of the affected owners, uh, followed by adoption of an ordinance, ordinance establishing the LMD. And even then, it's not finished. You would need to set and hold a public hearing at that point uh, to uh, amend or adopt the rule of assessments for the LMD. So in a little more details, uh, step one, the consideration of the resolution of intention. Uh, that resolution does the following. It validates that uh, there was a petition received. It outlines what an LMD is and how it will be managed. It communicates the proposed purpose of the LMD. It outlines the proposed rate structure and estimated revenue generated. Sets the time period for the LMD, uh, which in this case would be 10 years and it outlines the proposed LMD boundaries. And, and the majority of these bullets are statutory requirements. Uh, it has to be in that resolution. Uh, and this serves as the decision point, um, the first decision point for the board. You know, that consideration of, uh, does, do the dollars make sense? Uh, is, it, uh, is it in the public's uh, best interest? Step number two and three is to set and hold the public hearing, which you just uh, did for Pattison uh, last month. Uh, the public hearing is required by statute to hear objections to the resolution of formation from affected parties. And this is really the board's opportunity to, uh, uh, to consider once again, uh, whether it is in the public interest and, and financially feasible. Hey, Tim, that, this particular statute requires a 30-day uh, yes. from setting yeah. the public hearing to when hold the public hearing. It's a little bit different. Great point. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit different. It's, it is the 30-day. So, so it's a 30-day period uh, that when you set the public hearing to when you hold the public hearing, it's 30 days. And that is, uh, I believe, in, in the statute. Yes, it is. For a comment. Right? Yeah. Now, when you say we have to find that it's financially feasible, they've set a rate schedule? Yes. And, it, and, and is it, are they raising more than Patterson, less than Patterson in terms of their rates? Is it totally different? They came up with their own, or is everybody kind of right following here. a template? It, it, is, um, it is roughly uh, uh, consistent with other LMDs, but they, they all are a bit different. Uh, this one will have six different, I believe, six different categories, uh, which you will, well, yeah, you'll see in the petition if you take a look. Uh, but they are all based upon a similar premise where it, it, it is determined by the perceived value that that individual parcel would receive from the LMD. So if you are a 
lakefront um, homeowner uh, with with a beach there, it is perceived that you would receive better, you know, more benefit from formation of the LMD, and as such, your rates are higher each year. I would add that these um, rate structures are as proposed by the petitioners, so that is not the county coming in and, and uh, setting these rates. We do look at them and talk to the communities and you know, help them um, uh, you know, kind of brainstorm through it, but they are um, received from the petitioners. And will this bring in, though, like the way they've laid it out, will this bring in enough money to do their activities, you know, in line with what the finding we have to make? Yeah, uh, yes. So the way the staff looks at that, I, want, um, I don't know the exact amount we're off it without looking. It should be in the petition. So on the back. Yeah, just under 83000 Thank you. The way the staff looks at that is we look at the... Um, Kind of, kind of the the core functions of the LMD from the county's perspective. So, thinking about creation of an IVAN, uh, performing some education and outreach, and, and and you know instilling those BMPs within the community for water quality and and um, those types of issues. And then, will the money uh, be sufficient to do some work? It may not be able to do everything they want every year, but it is sufficient to do adequate work within the lake. So that is our definition, staff's definition of, is it financially feasible? And then like the state wildlife boat launch, $16,000. Yeah. Does that mean they get 16,000 votes? Exactly. Or, so they can kill this by not agreeing? Well, they have so many votes. I, if, if everyone else within the district voted yes and, and the uh, Fish and Wildlife voted no. They wouldn't. They wouldn't have enough votes to kill it. But, but it's have, influential. Yeah, yeah okay. that's it, it's weighted. We'll talk more about that. Related mm -hmm. to the shy of eighty-three thousand dollars a year, and you clearly stated perhaps maybe adequate to you for the operations of it. Yes. Is that also adequate to support the administrative uh, support from the county? Yes, it, it is um, uh, enough to support all of the administrative costs, uh, the interfund costs, and we have also um, had very clear communication with the petitioners on this, including um, printed frequently asked questions that are posted on the website, shared with the community. We had. Uh, a virtual online public uh, public meeting for the community to talk specifically about that and they are coming into this with the understanding that they are self-supported and that they should not expect uh, uh, they should not expect ongoing support from the county so I see that this says that there is a C attached budget but we don't have that that available? Yes, I can certainly certainly send that along with the signatures. We pulled the signatures out as as well, uh, but we can certainly forward that, and it will be part of the resolution. That's coming forward. I'd like to know how they got to only thirty one thousand. Well, that that is what they when they submitted the petition um, uh, considered to be their expenses, not their revenue, but their but their expenses. Which is why I'd like to look at the budget yes. to see if they did consider all of our administrative costs. Sure. Okay. Next step would be uh, step number four, and that, uh, like you did yesterday with Madison Lane, that is to authorize the vote of the affected owners. Uh, the structure for that is very prescriptive. Per RCW, it is a simple ballot. Um, shall, the, shall the Lake Management District be formed? It will come with an instruction sheet that refers the property owners back to the county's website where they will have access to the resolution of intention from the board that kind of spells out exactly what those expectations are. Um, as well as any other information. So 
and we'll be very deliberate in making sure that um, the, the property owners can be informed. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I want to talk real quick about the, the weighting uh, of this, and, and I included two categories in this just for reference. And if you look at the petition in the back, you will actually see, again, I believe six different categories. Uh, my point here is uh, to illustrate that the votes are weighted. This is by statute, so uh, it is dependent upon your uh, annual charge that that parcel will pay. So in the case of a lakefront developed parcel, uh, the proposed annual rate is $750. They would receive 750 votes um, uh, during the voting process. An upland parcel uh, that is charged $70 annually would receive 70, 70 votes. The LMD is formed by simple majority, and if the simple majority is not reached, the LMD process stops at that point. Is there a reason that the undeveloped parcels are not listed in here. I thought that was like half price or something. Uh, if you, I kept it short and just two examples in this slide, but if you look at the petition in okay. the back, Commissioner, Perfect. you will see the full rig Got structure it. is proposed. Yeah. Uh, next slide. As an example. As an example. Yeah. Next slide. Okay, following Following the vote, uh, if it came back in support, uh, the, the uh, board would um, then be uh, presented with an ordinance that would establish the LMD. That ordinance would uh, uh, outline the conditions for district operation. It would, it would outline the rates and charges, and it would align uh, those rates and charges with the assessor's office uh, senior citizen exemption program. So, Qualifying uh, rate payers would receive that 95% reduction in their uh, LMD rates. Next slide. So even after that ordinance creating the district, we were still not finished. Um, step six and seven would be to set and hold uh, public hearing number two in the process. This is a uh, statute required public hearing and it is specifically to hear objections to the special assessment rule from affected parties. So this is not an opportunity for them at that point to come in and say, we disagree with the rate structure. Uh, it is their opportunity to come in and say, we've reviewed our parcel and the rate and there's a mistake. Uh, it, it doesn't align with, with the rate structure that was proposed. Next slide. Question on that. Yes. <clears throat> would the board have the latitude to change the rates? They would have the latitude to make the correction. They would not have, uh, if that answers your question, they would not have the latitude to come in and change the rate structure, but they would have the latitude to make the correction if there has been a mistake for direct staff to do that. And, and that's important just because the, the narrow aspect of the process. Yes. But we can change the areas, right? Initially. Not not after it goes to a vote. But initially you can. After it's set, yes. it's kind of set. So the resolution that you considered yesterday would have been your opportunity for Patterson Lake um, uh, to reject the boundaries, to reject the rate structure, and send it back to them with your with your comments. Okay. And and this uh, step six and seven is that regulated under thirty six sixty one as well? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, last step would be number eight, and that is to adopt and amend the special assessment rule. Uh, that is done by ordinance, and uh, again, you know, if there is a mistake that's identified there, the board has the authority to direct staff to uh, to correct that at that point. <clears throat> Next slide. Thank you. Um, so after that, uh, LMD is formed. Uh, uh, rates are adopted. What next? Uh, the annual rates and charges are added to property tax statements. 
Uh, the advisory committee is established if requested by the community. Um, short and long-term work plans are developed. The IVAMP is developed at that point, and the board's guidance on that for forming newly formed LMDs is that before they do any in-lake herbicidal work, that IVAMP uh, will be uh, completed. So that has been the communication out to the communities. Uh, so there is an understanding there. Uh, the roles and responsibilities for LMD management uh, are reviewed with the advisory committee. And You're saying here it's, it's, it's by request. Yes, there's nothing, there's nothing in, in statute that calls for an advisory committee. They However, could say, they could just say, take our money and you guys do it, do the work. Yeah, if you look at uh, Barnes Lake in, in Tumwater, uh, which I used to be associated with, with, they have an advisory committee, but it's very, it's almost to that point where they want to have, um, they want to have updates, they want to provide feedback, but I believe they maybe meet quarterly and uh, just, you know, for information more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we know we're going to have communities that, uh, here that want to be engaged. The petitioning communities have stated as such, and we're fully expecting that uh, moving forward. And with that, I would answer any additional questions. Okay, questions? Commissioner I don't think I have any questions right now. Commissioner Manser? Yes. So I have four questions. One is... Is the timing issue, like, are we in the same boat as we are with Patterson? Are they going to be on the same timeline, and are we going to be confronting the same, like, request to potentially loan them money to get them started, all of that? Yeah, as far as timing goes, uh, we are, if you look at the schedule in the back, we are uh, obviously going to, going to miss our window to get any adopted um, racing charges into the assessment rule by November or December. We're tracking about um, th three months, two to three months uh, behind Patterson Lake. So we're going to be um, really into, into spring of next year before we uh, form. Late winter, early spring, um, it would be the most optimistic timeline for that. Okay, next question is, do we have any issue, I'm looking at the map, do we have any issue with upland parcels that have been included that are maybe yes. disputed, um, you know, versus what we had at Patterson? Commissioner Mahan says yes. Can I already have citizens who reached don't out to be me included, who don't want to be included, but um, with one of the people who specifically reached out to me, their HOA has a, has a boat hat, like a, community house right on Patterson Lake, or not Patterson, or Offutt Lake. Um, so, you know, for... I'm only seeing, I mean, looking at the map, I'm yeah. only seeing here along the there's south two, side is really the only place where anybody's not pretty much lakefront. Well, there's two, there's two HOAs included in this one. Um, if I remember this correctly, I'm looking at them. Um, one of the uh, HOA presidents didn't think that um, his area or neighborhood should be included. Um, in conversations with um, some members of the steering committee as well as other members of that HOA, there is a, a boathouse that's right in on the lake that that HOA has access to. So I see why they were included. So and they're paying a tenth, it looks like, $70 as opposed to $350. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Um, okay, well, yeah, it's not like, I mean, I really, like, I actually walked that trail over at Lake Point because it's like, you know, it's like you're not even connect. That one concerned me more because yeah. it's like you got to walk down a trail and the dirt. And you know, I mean, if you're a disabled person living at the north at the side of the lake, you know, I mean, some people didn't even know that they had access to the lake. I guess what I'm saying is 
this map doesn't seem to suggest those that, that something's been included that's kind of far off or trail connected. It looks like these neighborhoods just to the south, and I don't know the I don't know the architecture of this lake in terms of I've been to the to the recreational area. Is that on the south side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Is that where all these like extra parcels are, kind of? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that was a question. I kind of wanted to have a sense of that. And I guess this is a bigger question. Is there anything in this lake's ecology or structure or the, the, the problems that they're fighting that would lead us to think about it any differently than the Patterson Lake petition? Is it really the same kind of weeds they're trying to control and the same types of battles with toxic algae? I mean, I don't know if we've had a toxic algae closure here. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I don't I don't believe we have it, but it but I would say it is. It is very similar okay. uh, to the other lakes. Um, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. And then the last question I had is, I think you, or maybe it was Jennifer, but talked about if we're to, we've already gone forward with Patterson. If we add this one to the heap of lake management districts, yeah. we need a staffing change. Yeah. And I just think the board should at least address that so that we know the consequences of what we're doing here. Um, in terms of how we're going to have to hire more public work staff or charge people more for the whatever, however that looks. There's an item in the budget coming up. And wait, 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 was that like a, we needed like a half an FTE per lake or something, so we're going to need a new person. We're, we're, yes, that like will be another policy, policy, basically. Yeah. And yes. we'll pay how much out of general fund versus the, the fees that we'll reimburse? It shouldn't come anything from general fund. That employee that's, will be funded by these managers. That was the question that I yeah, asked. Yeah, the cover, they, that's why I wondered how they got we, to 31,000. That seems yeah. like. That's what I asked if the 80, 80, what is 89,000 generated by this petition funds the operations mm -hmm. and the administrative support from the county. I know there's administrative support, but I guess, you know, it doesn't always match up like right. man for man, right? Like maybe they need a third of an employee, but we can't hire a third of a human being. Right. We gotta hire a human being, then they gotta do other stuff that we're paying for. So I just, there can be a financial impact to the county when you need an extra person. If, if there is time available that the lakes are not paying for, I would suggest that there was probably work to be done in other areas in public works, would you say? Well, I think our proposal um, moving, we? yeah, our proposal moving forward will be to um, ha have <laughs> have the remaining staff time uh, work on the Healthy Lakes program in, in, in general, which you, the board is currently supported. Um, the, uh, yeah, it's probably part of a larger conversation, but uh, if we get into uh, the, the staff time on noxious weed projects, that, that was a, a good faith effort on our part to try to create efficiencies for the two LMDs that has, has been a bit of a struggle in, in, in managing through. So long term, I don't know if we will continue to, to, to support that structure. But and again, that's probably a 30 minute briefing. <laughs> But to answer your question, yes, we will need their there's staffing resources tied to this. Funded either all by the LMDs or by LMDs and other billable activities. The expectation of the communities, uh, the, the, the two communities coming forward is that it will be their responsibility to fund the resource needs of the of their activities. So um, between the two LMDs, we, we would expect that to be uh, funded and supported out of the two petitioning uh, LMDs funds. But that may change in the future, right? Because I think we saw it with Long and Lawrence, like where, you know, they were requiring more staff time as they become more kind of, you know, the process, right? They've needed less staff time or, you know, their budget, they budgeted less less of an FTE, um, I think they're one third now? In, in 2018, we went through a process and we uh, put forward some, some efficiencies, uh, 
Public Works put so forward some efficiencies that reduced their staff time from a combined 1.51 FTE for the two LNDs uh, down to um, uh, about 0.7 something, so roughly half. Uh, we cut that in half, but as part of that, we supported the remainder of the aquatic resource specialists through uh, asking that position to support some of our noxious weed uh, program river projects um, that has been very problematic because we did that and they received the efficiencies with the expectation that staff would not be available during these times of the year and much less available um, and we have continued to struggle with expectations there. Um, so moving forward, we'll have, have to recommend that we move away from that approach. So when you say move away from that approach, you mean increase the amount of FTE that's charged to Long and Lawrence Lakes? Yes. All right. Or, so or just to be clear. Yeah, or to the Healthy Lakes program, if that continues to be supported. So the Healthy Lakes program is all of $10,000. Yeah, it's not very and, much. And the, there's no guarantee that the board will even Understood. continue that, much less increase it. But the board could. You certainly could. If, uh, That's they up chose to, you. to invest more money in clear, and, clean water. And will you clean invest it in Absolutely. administrative you, uh, costs? There, there's the option. Yes. Yes. Well, the board has the latitude. There you go. But that is exactly to Commissioner Mincer's question yeah. where will the rest of the charges be paid from? Sure. Yeah. It's right. going to be up to the board. Always. Always up to the board. So that's all my question. Yeah. So um, okay. I guess I, I I do have a request for a future briefing, and I'm not sure if this is something with the board of health, um, or it's a work session for the board. But you know, we got a briefing with Pig Mac, the pesticide. I guess not. The uh, certain committee that does the pesticides and feedback. Yeah, yeah. feedback. Um, and we got it at the Board of Health. Very high pesticide use of, you know, and, you know, there were a lot of questions asked. Is it the lakes? Is it what? What is it, right? Is it just what caused this huge increase? And, and the numbers that we got from last year, you know, it, it gone down. And so as we're getting two new lakes on board, I kind of want to hear from them, right, on what the impact on pesticide use in the county is it is going to be. Is it just going to skyrocket again? Are we going to, you know, is there coordination between, you know, the LMDs and FAVMAC? What, what, is, the, what is the overall sense of, uh, of that? advisory committee. Um, I would like to hear from them as, as we move forward with these two new LMDs and um, the use of pesticides in the county. We are, we are also planning to propose for the 2024-2025 cycle an overarching uh, lakes study for all of Thurston County um, to, um, to evaluate what a healthy lake is, yeah. and and what those level levels of uh, management would look like for for the board to consider uh, more holistically, and, and to you know uh, develop some uh, uniformity between how we manage manage lakes, and to get a hold of get ahead of over managing uh, of the lakes if you. I think I sent a video some months back that, that was really it was short, but it was very descriptive in in the problems with with reactionary management of lakes. So if you have too much vegetation growth, if you have a nutrient rich lake, which all of, most of our lakes are nutrient rich, and you over control the vegetation, then you're going to have an increase in algae blooms. And then if you respond to that and treat the algae, 
then you're going to have an increase in vegetation because there's some kind of organism out there that's going to want to um, process uh, those nutrients. And what you can end up with is a very out of balance lake. And if you research, you know, some of the, uh, one of the Pierce County lakes is in that condition now where it's being referred to as a dead lake. That's and, the one in Lakewood, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, the, the little video is really, it's from an ecologist and it really talks to the dangers of, of overmanaging the lake. So we would like to propose, um, you know, this, uh, this guidance document, this, this the holistic look at lake management so the board will have, you know, good information to consider how we want to apply um, our IPM policy, are we over applying herbicides, are we not? Um, you know, just a, a, an objective look uh, by professionals at, at uh, what is lake health. Um, but I mentioned Walbert earlier, and that's where you know a lot of um, training and and, and uh, resources for lake professionals. Uh, that's where they go to. But if you think about that, it's sponsored by the herbicide companies. It, it is it is it is sponsored by companies who have a very vested interest in in what they're promoting within the lakes. It's all just a balancing act in the end. It is, it is a balancing act, and, and it's uh, reactive management is, is, could cause problems in the end. And if you look at the ortho photos, I think I mentioned this before, from last spring in comparison to, to other lakes, the lakes that seem to have uh, the flash green and those ortho photos are our managed lakes. And you can see them, you know, there's concern that they're coming out of that. Um, I appreciate that because I think that's what the community would expect when we, you know, what we have seen in the history is that we shifted strategies and there's nothing wrong with trying new stuff because right. I know it was difficult. We, were, we weren't being very successful before, but then you got to look at, okay, well, how is it performing? Right. And we still have a lot of toxic algae blooms and there's the balance issue and I, I always... I get philosophically, I get very nervous when we think that we can, the humans can engineer or out engineer nature because it doesn't always work out too good. Um, nature usually knows what it's doing. And um, if I've got to err on the side of one or the other, I'm going to take my chances with an, a more natural process than with a, a you know, a, a, a reactionary, you know, engineered chasing. process, chasing that tail. Um, one question I have, and this never really came up because the Board of Health was the Board of County Commissioners, so I never put much thought into the distinction when it came to decision making on these questions, but are there questions related to all this that's going to fall within the Board of Health, which is now a different body? And when it comes to, you know, our prescriptions that we authorize or any of these practices that we're engaging in, which of those elements are going to be decisions of the Board of Health now? Not the Board of County Commissioners. Um, I think the, uh, I believe the Board of Health in, uh, will continue to approve new prescriptions. And that is, has been the process. The new prescriptions are, um, are vetted by, I can't remember the, the group who oversees the prescription. Big Big, big, man. big man. So, and that is the group who takes a particular uh, request and assess the chemical compositions, the effects, and everything else. And depending on, on their feedback, because that's a, a group of experts, and then we'll bring a, a potential option for an action by the Board of Health. The Board of County Commissions do not approve those prescriptions. I don't, I don't think the, the new makeup of the Board of Health has changed, will change because of that. That will continue to be an option. But... I would assume that conversation will be more robust with the new members of the, the Board of Health. Um, and, and whether that will you know, evolve into something different, additional activities, the Board of Health, the Board of Health would like to see related to prescriptions and effects on water quality, that is something that the Board of Health needs to explore, really, the new Board of Health. I think as we think about this whole balancing act that we're trying to get right, we need to make sure that we always remember the history 
of why we're in the situation that we're in today. And it goes way back before uh, housing, actually. It goes back to the logging days. And from those logging days on, I mean, they were all, all these small lowland lakes. They were the holding pond for the log uh, sawmills. And they just pushed uh, met excess material out into the lake by the tons. And then that decomposes and causes that nutrient buildup. And then uh, came along the game department. And they poisoned all those lakes. And if you've ever been on a lake that's been poisoned, it'll gag you. It'll literally gag you because the fish are all, all the organisms that live in the lake that depend on oxygen out of the water, they all die. And it is unbelievable what that looks like. I mean, first, it's everything's floating on the lake. Well, then eventually they decompose and they say, again, adding to the nutrient buildup of the lake. And then when you're trying to control the effect of the nutrient buildup, which in turn is weed buildup, then you're putting other toxic material on those weeds and killing the weeds, and then they fall to the bottom and deteriorate, and they keep building this uh, process. You know, and one of the, the more successful ways to manage these lowland lakes is through a vacuum process to get all that uh, initially man-made product out of it, but that's expensive as well. So, uh, yeah. and possibly not permitted anymore. Well, I mean, it's it's right. all in how you approach your balance. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, to to your so point. It, it, you just can't you can't just think about imposing uh, herbicides or whatever, and then balancing it out with what you use. What do you use? Alum? Isn't alum just clay for, uh, you spread it out in the water and the uh, stuff attaches to it and it sinks, or, right? Or algae treatment. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I don't look at that as a toxic material necessarily because it's uh, just, but it is contributing to that buildup. You know, every time you mess with it, so you like, yeah. it's a balance, but it's, we can't forget where we came from. Yeah, and alum treatment is masking. It is binding an issue. It's not treating it. It's not taking it out. It is binding it and dragging it to the bottom Bound where the bottom. eventually it's going to release. And to your point, you're right. I mean, and there's been studies to support that a good portion of the phosphorus loading to these lakes uh, is, is natural. Or, you know, to your point from past practices, uh, I think on Long Lake, the number that comes to mind is like 40%. It's, it's also really obvious to see if you're out on Long, Long Lake or one of the lakes, the, 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 the effect of development it, itself. Sure and you see the green lawns and you know everything that, that's running off of that. A healthy lake has a lot of vegetation in it, and, and we just gotta uh, you know, find, that, find that balance. Uh, so appreciate the conversation. Okay, it is 10.50. So oh. uh, next steps. Mm -hmm. I just had a, a random question. Um, Tim, do you have any sense of why these two new uh, groups are wanting to form a lake management district rather than a special purpose district? Uh, uh, yes, my, my perspective uh, on these is the same reason that the two communities who have LMDs now continue to want LMDs and can, are continuing the discussion uh, for next year. I think that despite the communication that's been put out there, I think when you break it down and look at the apples to apples comparison of LMDs versus special districts and, and, and what you would pay for via consultants and insurance and everything over at Black Lake, compared to what you pay at Long or Lawrence, uh, it's very cost effective uh, to become an LMD because the LMD uh, uh, is, uh, you have staff, you have, you have staff uh, on, uh, available to you. Uh, it's cost effective. If you look at Black Lake and you look at uh, 
that comparison, what they pay in consultants, insurance, all of that, I think the last time I looked, it was like 36, 37% is what they're paying. Uh, if you break that down and break the LMD costs, in my humble opinion, they're getting a very good deal when it comes to the financial part of it. The other part of that is there's no liability. There's no liability for the LMDs. If there is a herbicide application that goes south, if there is anything related to any of our activities, it is the county that's, that's on the hook for that, and that's very attractive. Um, we had those conversations with these communities and, and made it very clear that if they, if they want to be uh, front and center and engaged, then the, the county uh, and public works staff would help them support, you know, support them in pursuing a special district, and that would be the best approach for them, as we have with the current LMDs. Um, I, I recently asked at a Long Lake committee meeting that exact question, why LMD versus special district, and the answer was a bit confounding to me. It came back from Mr. Carmen, and it, and it he basically said, we choose an LMD because a special district is allowed to use herbicides that the LMDs can't. So we want to be over, overly cautious. And that was very confusing to me because, you know, special districts have the option mm -hmm. as to what herbicides they use. Um, so it didn't, didn't make sense to me. Um, but that is my perspective on, on why LMDs versus special districts. I, I do think that they're very concerned about the environmental issues. I agree. You know, agree. That's, a, that's a big piece of it. But if you take a look at uh, the legislative intent of uh, 3661, I think it is, it, it actually addresses the intent is to encourage the residents of the state of Washington to work with their municipal counterparts and for the betterment of water quality. We, but we have an IVAMP right here that was cre created uh, for Black Lake just prior to them forming that was done lockstep with Thurston County. So there's nothing in, in the formation of a special district that, um, that, that makes that unavailable to, to them. Um, so. Next steps. So um, you will see an AIS coming up um, where you will be considering a resolution of intention of establishing this LMB. And as well, at that point, you will consider setting a public hearing. That will be the next steps on this. And, uh, and also, we'll follow up uh, with uh, our last pro return to coordinate with Patrick Soderberg on the upcoming briefing uh, related to the uh, call the the PICMAC, or whatever that is, group, uh, sees the effects of adding two additional LMDs in the, on the applications related to uh, those leaks in terms of water quality. Those are the two uh, items that I have. Okay, so it is 10.59. We are adjourned.